You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to a very fiery episode of Ask Drone You. Oh, really? Yeah, someone cool. asked the wrong question. Oh, boy. This is going to be interesting. But are you, nice. Are you ready? No. <laughs> Strap in your seatbelts, boys. We're going for some fun. <laughs> and this is episode 790. I'm Rob. We are excited that you're with us. As always, appreciate it. Especially some of you folks that have been with us for a couple years, if not longer. It's pretty amazing. And it we, really is. It's just, it's humbling. It really is humbling. And uh, hopefully you're getting a lot of value to this day. And if you're not, tell us. What questions do you have? Send them in. We'll make sure you get value by answering those questions. Totally. Send them in. Go to askdroneu.com. Leave us a review. Or just subscribe to the show and have the show automatically downloaded to your phone so you can get the really cool, fun stuff like this show faster. Yeah. It's really convenient. Check it out. Overcast, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Today's question is one of those questions. I said this would be a fiery show because, and again, I, I you know what? I'm going to preface this whole show with this. I'm not angry at the person for asking this question. It is not a bad question. The question represents an overall theme that is going on with intermediate to younger age pilots. There's a huge theme with a lot of people becoming super engulfed with the ideology of becoming perfect as a drone pilot. But then what about building their business? What about building their ability to sell? What about building their selling muscle, their selling skills and their system and their business systems? Oftentimes, many drone pilots are focusing so heavily on their ability to fly and not so heavily on their ability to do business or more importantly, sell. Because that's what a business is, right? It's essentially selling a product or a service, am I right? Or is a business that plus a system of systems, systems like marketing, sales, creating business, sharing deliverables, client outreach. Do you have a set systems? Have you even written down in a mind map about how your business works? Well, mm. anyway, uh, we've got a lot of good, fun information coming with the business course that should be done here soon. I, don't quote me on soon. I don't know what soon is. It could be a month. <laughs> I don't know. We're really... Uh, We've got you know more and more classes getting filmed and more and more getting added to editing and Howell's overwhelmed to say the least right now. Yep. So uh, anyway, working at it. we are working at it. We're trying to get better at it. So anyway, my point is the theme, become a really good pilot, learn to do business later. That couldn't be more wrong. And that's in my eyes what this question represents. Um, so I will, I will answer the question to my best ability, but I am going to ask questions that I hope will incite thought in you. Um, incite thought in you, the listener. Incite thought in you, the question asker. Because I think that sometimes these questions need to reach new depths in order to ascertain the right answer. That makes sense? I think so. All right. Well, now it's time to play ball. Right. <laughs> All right. Hi, I would like to know what cameras for drone I need to offer services in an oil refinery company. I have a Phantom 3 Advance. Is there a camera that can be replaced? Okay, so oil refinery businesses, she would like to offer services. Do I slay the question now or later? Um, I don't think any slaying is necessary. I think if we believe that maybe there's a deeper level we can go with the question, that Let, would be helpful. Uh, agreed. And I'm trying to think, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the question asker. Are they just trying to ask a succinct question that gets to the bottom of what they're really trying to do? And there's or something did, to be said for that. Oh, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Or did they not consider the other questions that should accompany this question for the best answer possible? So the question, hmm. what is the best oil rig for inspections? Rob, what's the best drone for oil rig inspections? <laughs> Why would you do that? Oh, because neither of us have the right 
information to answer the question. Because we don't have enough information. That is exactly right. Well, why mm. don't we have What kind of services are we talking about? What kind of deliverables are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about someone who's looking for methane leaking from their oil rigs? Are we talking mm. about someone to do a permanent record and mapping these oil rigs? Are we talking about just Zoom photos to look over these pipelines in certain areas where failure points happen often? I mean, what are we really talking about here? There are a lot of questions. So maybe that is the answer there. Number one, the drone that she brought up in her question, probably we can just kind of get rid of that right off the bat, right? That's P3A, probably not going, unless you're just taking pictures. Absolutely not. And then you're flying very, 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 very close to things. Yeah. So. Which probably isn't safe, I would imagine. In addition, I don't think it's spark proof, so you may yeah. really have a problem there. Yeah, um, exactly. Not safe. Um, but anyway, uh, it also depends on the type of oil rig, whether it's offshore or whether it's onshore. So that whole spark proof thing depends on the environment, which we talked about in one of our most recent episodes about your operating environment and training in that operating environment because it is a unique environment. Now, that being said, if we knew the deliverables, we could probably better answer that question. If someone is looking to do maps, like a topo map, before an oil rig is installed, that's one type of deliverable that we would add into our asset category that we need to collect. Mm -hmm. If they need to do mapping and they want to be able to see methane leaks, then we're going to need a really specific type of camera in order to see those methane leaks, like the Alpha series. Um, not the Alpha Series from Sony, like the Alpha Series from FLIR. Um, in addition to that, are they looking to do close-up inspections when they do find something, say, via thermal or infrared? Or is that something that they're wanting to do, getting more detail with Zoom? All of these questions are relevant. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because I feel like so many of you are focusing on the simplistic aspect, what is the best drone for X? What is the best drone for Y? When oftentimes business owners and pilots themselves are finding that they may go after Y and finally end up at Z because now they kind of comprehend what these drones are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we need to ask the deeper questions. What is the deliverable? Now, if you've ever read the book, How to Be a Rainmaker, you know that in that book, it says that you really should not be educating clients. You want to go after clients who know what they want and need their service. Uh, they need the service. They know the value and they want it right now. And you don't have to educate them on it. But we are living in a day and age where there's so much bad information out in the airwaves that... It, you do have to do some sort of education, but you have to be really careful on what type of education you're doing, which is why I bring up this point to begin with. If your client does not know the type of deliverable that they need, it could be a red flag to say, I may not want to work with this individual. It could also be as simplistic as, I need my maps in a measurable format that I can measure anywhere in the world via an internet connection. Okay, PIX40 model. Uh, I need to be able to do volumetric measurements and have a PDF printout within seconds. Okay, drone deploy. I need, you know, blah, 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 blah. I need a point cloud classified ortho rectified. Okay, Autodesk. You know what I mean? Like, sure. you really have to know but what people are going after because, I mean, even in engineering, the types of, uh, of files that they use are just dramatically different than, let's say, architecture or, you know, these other... Um, very specific niche jobs. And mm -hmm. it's so important to understand what what is the client after and why are they after it? What problem are they trying to solve? And if you have to help them with the delivery aspect of it, okay. But also make sure that your clients understand that in order to get other uh, file types, it's going to be an upcharge. Or maybe you just say, look, if you're not sure what type of delivery you want, deliverable you want, you present them with three, you pick it, and then you move on from there. And the extra deliverables are extra on the next job. Yeah. It's interesting that I that book that you bring up and the, the idea of not wanting to educate your clients or those aren't the kinds of clients that you want. I guess I can see that point. Basically... He's focusing on the quadrant. He... Understand, understand. But particularly in this industry with such a new technology that can absolutely help a company or an organization, I just think it's the nature of the beast that you're going to be doing some educating. And so your skill set has to include being able to articulate and conversate in a, in a way that makes them 
comfortable and able to sh- to even figure out what they need, so, even figure out the problems that they have so that you can help them solve those problems. I agree with you that there it is a fine line on, I mean, we, the nature of the beast is the fact that we do have to do some sort of education. But right. what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't be wasting hours and hours and hours on end educating your clients. But this and actually, I see that point. This actually reminds me of the um, testimonial that we got from the Houston mapping class that was on video from the lady who attended our competitions mapping class and then attended our mapping class. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring this up is because of what you just said. You have to have a good knowledge of the different types of deliverables, the outputs, and not only the types of deliverables, why they're important and where they go and how to share them, but if you take one particular mapping class and all you learn is, say, drone deploy, you're not going to have any concept of how to output, share, deliver different types of DXF files, uh, FBX files, LAZ files, you know, PLY files. You're, you're really going to be like, w- are you speaking another language right now? <laughs> so uh, sure. <clears throat> it's really important. Sure. But obviously the clients probably aren't going to understand all that, so you're going to have well, to educate them. Exactly, but what I'm saying is that if you're not getting the right education from the get-go, you're not going to be able to answer those questions. Oh, sure. That's true. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got to know what you're talking about. Exactly. Which is why we talk. Yeah. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole anymore. Um, When you are asking the question, what is the right drone for the job? If you want to videotape anything, the right drone for the job is the one that's with you. Uh, I think that answers Mm. that question. If you're doing anything technical, you need a very specific type of drone. If you're doing anything... Uh, that is very niche, like, for example, oil rig inspections who are maybe looking for methane, you might realize that you're going to have to fly an M600 with a $60,000 FLIR set up. Yeah. You There's, know? Yes. This this question is a, is actually a big question in it terms really is. of, I mean, it, it would take a lot of which is, back and forth. Which is why out I was trying ultimate. to say, if, I'm, if I put myself in the, in the asker's shoes, did I ask the question the way I did just to be succinct and, and sound um, reasonable mm. in my question in being presented to us? Or did I not realize that it's truly a deeper question? And yeah. either way, I wanted to approach this show with this fact. You have to know what you're going to deliver to your clients and you have to be educated on the different types of deliverables, whether it's creative and whether it's technical. Sure. It's really, really important. In addition to that, you have to be asking the right questions, not only in buying equipment, but the right questions to your clients. And I see so many people waffle in sales. Like, I don't know, but God's gift to me has been sales. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's charm or watching my dad or growing up in an older environment. Yes, I grew up in a neighborhood with 146 houses and 10 kids. So uh, very older generation, grew up in D.C. So you're saying you learned a lot from these folks. Is that what you're saying? Uh, And I'm saying I don't know whether the gift is from environmental factors or God's grace or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, My point is, is that I just see people approaching sales in the wrong direction. They get so excited that they have a drone job. They lose sight of the objective at the first place, which the objective is, okay, what problem are you trying to solve? Because a lot of clients don't really understand how to articulate what they're trying to do. Exactly. They Agreed. piecemeal things and you've mm-hmm. got to understand, okay, what problem are you trying to solve? Why is that important to you? And then what deliverable do you want? With those three questions, those are your three magic questions right there. Well, even the, the deliverable question, you might need to answer that for them essentially by understanding what problem they're trying to solve, right? Uh, okay. Yes. This, based on what you've told me, is probably what you want. Here's what it will do for you. Do you agree? Things like that. But you also have to learn how to be a good salesman. And part of being a good salesman is being able to read the person that you're talking to. And I I say that because one very specific tell on whether people are interested in whether what you're doing or not is are they asking specific questions? Mm. Are they asking for technical questions? Because if they are, they're genuinely interested in buying from you. And once you get a technical question, all nervousness should go away. They're there because they want to be there with you. They're there because they believe the time is valuable, that they're going to have some sort of information, some sort of value that 
provides a solution to a problem. Sales is two things. One, value. Provide a solution to a problem in a dollarized amount. Now, step two is evoke emotion via personal or business. What is the why? So important. Once they ask those technical questions, they're already interested. Your job is halfway over. It's just getting to the close. After that, if they ask you ob uh, uh, objections or they say, well, what about this and that? Any objection, a lot of people get worried about objection. When you're in sales and someone says, yeah, well, well I like that IPA more. And it's like the objection is an opportunity to create an objective it gets you closer to the yes. It's not a no where most people waffle and fail. It's actually it's building trust. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is, you can tell he likes sales because he's I, talking about it. I good get sales. off on sales because it's That's such funny. a game of psychology. Like it's like, well, which, which route do I want to go this time? Because I, what's funny to me is I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because I have a genuine – uh, satisfaction with helping people. And before when I was in sales and I didn't understand what I was doing, it was more of playing the game to play the game well. And now that I have like a, a deep passion for what I'm doing, sales becomes a lot easier. So that's another little cue for that's you guys a, out there. Oh, that's such an important key that mm -hmm. if you just number one, if you care about what you're doing because of how you can impact other people's lives, because the whole are you passionate thing, I mean, I, I, I don't even want to go into that because I think that's an overused word. But if you care enough to be willing to do what you need to do to make a difference in somebody else's life and somebody else's business, I think you're going to be fine. True. Agreed. I think you're going to be fine. Very agreed. The last part of the sales is how are you going to close? A lot of people say, well, I'll check out this information and get back to you later. Awesome. Can I expect to hear from you Friday at 9 a.m.? Or would you like to go flying with me for a Friday fly day? If that doesn't work for you, the following week around Tuesday around 3 p.m. is good. Do either of those work for you? Once they pull out the calendar, you're already in for the close. Uh, you, you've got to have all the information there to, to, to give them, to let them review, look over. So you have to set that time. If you don't set that time, sale's over. You don't have a sale. Okay. Um, you really should lock it down right there and then. And the best way to lock down any drone sale, ladies and gentlemen, is the drum roll, please, please, the demo. <laughs> Got to do the demo. Uh, let them fly. Just literally let them fly. But you have to showcase that you're a good pilot as well. So make it look complicated. I know that sounds stupid, but make it look complicated. It is complicated. And you don't want to make it look easy because if you make it look easy, then they're going to think that they can do it. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's all psychology. Absolutely. I could go down this rabbit. I mean, this is why I've been doing those. Uh, the last couple of years, I've taught those uh, guest lectures at UNM uh, yeah. in sales. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. It's good anyway. stuff. It works. It really does it sure work. It sure does, guys. All right. Well, I hope that answers the question decently enough. Um, I really just wanted to uh, kind of go at this question with, a, I don't think you're asking the right question, but I want to I talk about that. But, but feel free to send a follow-up question. Yeah. Like if this has spurned some additional thinking from your perspective as, okay, yeah, this is actually what I'm trying to do. Let me get a little bit more specific. Send it in. True. We'd love to hear from you. Please do. So For sure. Anyway. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us today. If you leave us a review or if you become a member, you get to hear from us a lot more often. Check it out, droneu.education. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Drone <laughs> You.